Red Eyes Undead Reborn. That's right. Undead truly is reborn. So I'm not trying to hear zombies as a deck name, bro. From now on, this deck is called Undead. <laughs> Konami seems to be really enjoying the rise of Team 6k. First, they give us a skill that gives you 6k life points, then they keep releasing support for all of mine and Weatherman's favorite decks, and now they've named a skill after me. This new deck is probably the zombiest of all zombie decks that we've gotten so far, so let's just get into it. This deck focuses on getting out the new red Eyes Zombie Dragon Lord, who has a quick effect on the opponent's turn only to revive a zombie from your grave. And we can use him to summon Skeletal Dragon Felgrand, who on summon can banish a monster from the opponent's field or graveyard. Just by having the Felgrin in grave, you can revive it during the opponent's play with Zombie Dragon Lord to interrupt the banishing from either field or grave makes it really versatile too. Usually these kinds of interruptions only mess with the opponent's field, but being able to mess with their grave instead gives you a lot of options, but it doesn't stop there. Felgrin has another effect that triggers if a monster is summoned from the grave to negate a monster on the field. So if you have this guy on the field while the Zombie Dragon Lord revives something, that's gonna be a negate too. That said, the Zombie Dragon Lord is a hard once per turn, so we can't use him to both revive Felgrand for his banish and to revive something else for Felgrand's negate. So we can make sure we get both of those interruptions by getting Yuki Ono the Icicle Mayakashi into the grave because she has a quick effect to banish herself from grave to revive a zombie synchro from grave or banish pile. So you could use her instead to revive Felgrand for the banish so that the zombie dragon lord can revive something else for the negate. If you can set this up, the opponent using Book of Moon on your zombie dragon lord won't hurt you so much because you could still use him to revive something in response and you'll still be able to get Felgrand's banish with the Yuki Ona revive. And if the opponent wants to banish Felgran from your grave in response to Yuki Ona, then you can chain the zombie Dragon Lord to make sure you still get the Felgran banish. This is going to be the main situation we set up for a lot of our duels with this deck, but I won't lie, it definitely takes a lot of setup. We gotta make sure we can check everything off of this list. First you need to make sure that you can get the zombie Dragon Lord on the board. Second you need to get Felgran in the grave. And third you need to get enough materials to summon Yuki Ona, then still have another material alongside it to link it off so that the Yuki Ona can get into the grave. We are going to need a lot of special summons to get all of this going. And the way that zombies are, they all want to be special summoned from the grave, so we got a bunch of ways to get them in the grave. First, we got our two different normal summons, Samurai Skull and Unizombie. Samurai Skull on normal summon sends any zombie to grave, and Unizombie has an ignition effect to send a zombie from deck to grave and also raise a monster's level by one. They got other benefits too, like if Samurai Skull is removed from the field by an opponent's card effect, he can summon a level 4 or lower zombie from deck, except for himself. So if the opponent got rid of him after you summoned him, then you could summon Unizombie from the deck to get another sent off. And this is either going to make your opponent avoid stopping this guy with the removal, or it'll get you another send with Unizombie if the opponent didn't read him. Unizombie can also discard one of your zombies from hand to increase the monster's level by one. The level modulation of this guy isn't really that important, it's just the fact that he can help you get your grave set up. We also got Shang-Chi the Spirido. She has an ignition effect to send a zombie from deck to grave. But undead, she's a level 6. She can actually special summon herself if she gets banished, by banishing another zombie from grave. So we need to get a way to get a zombie in grave that we are okay with banishing for our effect, we also have to find a way to banish her in the first place. That's where the skill comes in. It lets you discard one or two zombies to put Zombie Reborn face down on your field, and also put the Red Eye Zombie Dragon Lord from your extra deck into the grave. Discarding one or two zombies is great, just another way to get your zombies into the grave. Technically, you only have to discard one, but discarding two makes it a really easy way to fill your grave up with zombies. That's all of the ways you can get your zombies into the grave, your Samurai Skull, Yuna Zombie, Chung Shi, and the Undead Reborn skill. Now we know how to get your stuff into the grave, but how are we going to get them out of the grave? Well, the skill gives us Zombie Reborn, which can revive a zombie from our grave by banishing another copy of it from the deck or extra deck. So we could revive our Zombie Dragon Lord by banishing another copy from our extra deck, or we could revive Chang Shi by banishing another copy from our deck, which would then trigger the banished Chang Shi to banish another zombie from grave to special summon itself. And then boom, we have two Chang Shi on the field. But we can't just do that willy nilly. Because we need to have our zombies in the grave, we have to make sure that we have something in grave that we are okay with banishing. That's why if we are going to banish Chang Shi, we want to get Shinobi Necro into the grave with any of our ways to get zombies in grave, so that when Chang Shi is banished, it can banish the Shinobi from grave to summon itself, which will also trigger the Shinobi's effect when banished to special summon itself too, and that gives us a nice and easy 2 plus 8 into our Felgrin. But hold your corpses though. If we use Zombie Reborn to resummon Chang Shi and banish another Chang Shi from deck, and have Chang Shi summon itself from banish 
by banishing the shinobi and the shinobi resummons itself that's three monsters on our board right away that is really damn cool bro but what if you already have monsters in your main monster zones like the samurai skull or the yuna zombie that sent the shinobi to the grave in the first place if we have that we need to find a way to get them off the field first and the easiest way is to get another monster on field so that we can link summon because a link summon will leave our main monster zones open if we can also get mizuki in the grave somehow then we will have another way to get monsters on the board because he can banish himself from the grave to revive any zombie and that can help us to get our link plays going so that we can have clear main monster zones this deck doesn't really have any one card combos but it has a bunch of different two card combos that all give you some form of what you're trying to get to if you have Chongxi and shinobi you can discard both with the skill to put the zombie dragon lord in grave and the zombie reborn onto your field so you can use zombie reborn to revive Chongxi and banish another one and have that banish Chongxi banish the shinobi to summon itself triggering the shinobi to summon itself and you'll be able to use the Chongxi's effect to send a mizuki from deck to grave make sure that you remember which Chongxi is which because the one that is summoned from the banish pile goes to the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field that's important because of the zombie dragon lord's grave effect you can banish a zombie you control and if you do summon it from the grave you can banish the Chongxi from your field that was summoned by zombie reborn to summon your zombie dragon lord which will trigger the shinobi's effect to draw a card and discard a card then you can use the other Chongxi and the shinobi to synchro summon felgrand then you could link them both off into vampire sucker and use the mizuki in grave to summon back the zombie dragon lord which will trigger the sucker to draw another card this will leave you with a zombie dragon lord able to revive felgrand for a banish on the opponent's turn which will cause sucker to draw yet another card on the opponent's turn when all of these draws you will have drawn three cards one by shinobi and two by sucker and because of that you'll likely have drawn into hand traps or follow-up plays and with a shinobi necro you might have even discarded a mizuki to give you even more special summons if you instead open up with either yuna zombie or samurai skull as well as either mizuki chungshi or shinobi then you can use your normal summon to send what you don't have and use the skill to discard what you do have so that you can use mizuki to revive chungshi so that chungshi can send shinobi if you don't have it or mizuki if you already have shinobi then you can link the chungshi and the normal summon into vampire sucker and use zombie reborn to revive chungshi and banish another chungshi and have chungshi banish shinobi to summon itself and have the shinobi summon itself and the vampire sucker will draw a card too and then you can use zombie dragon lord to banish the chungshi that was revived from grave and trigger the shinobi to draw a card and discard a card then you can synchro summon chungshi and the shinobi to go into felgrand and link the felgrand and sucker off so you can have your felgrand in grave what you link it off into is going to depend on if you have another mizuki in grave if you don't then you just use sucker and felgrand to go into another sucker but if you don't then you use sucker and felgrand to go into yuki ona use mizuki in grave to revive another zombie then link that zombie and yuki ona into the second vampire sucker you can get the yuki ona in grave that way you'll have our optimal end board of yuki ona to revive felgrand for a banish and zombie dragon lord to revive another zombie for the felgrand again on top of the fact that you'll have drawn two cards on your own turn and drawn another card on the opponent's turn giving you a great chance to draw hand trap if you happen to open both yuna zombie and samurai skull you can actually use both of them by using the skill to send yuna zombie to the grave and using samurai skill to send mizuki to the grave mizuki can revive yuna zombie so that yuna zombie can send another zombie from deck to grave and you could have yuna zombie make itself a level 4 too so you could use them both to go into felgrand for his banish if that's what you feel you need and if the monster you sent to grave with yuna zombie is another mizuki then you can summon felgrand to the extra monster zone then link it off into gravity controller and have mizuki revive a zombie for a zombie dragon lord to banish to summon itself so that you'll have him to revive felgrand on the opponent's turn but really that's only if you only have yuna zombie and samurai skull to be honest all of the combos i've shown so far are only assuming the very bare minimum of what you have and the truth is most of the time you're going to have quite a lot more than the bare minimum that's why i say this deck doesn't truly have hard set combos it just has goals you want to set up with all your special summons you just need to know how all of the zombies interact with each other to get the best out of them honestly the more mizuki you can get into the grave the better because after you establish your zombie dragon lord with felgren grave the only thing left to do is see if you can also get yuki ona in the grave and mizukis are the easiest way to do that but technically there is another way and that is mad molar mad molar has a grave effect to make a level six or higher monster lose two levels just to summon himself from grave but you'll be locked into zombies for the turn our skill already locks our main deck into only summoning dark zombies but our extra deck can technically be anything so if you're going to use this just keep in mind that he is probably the reason you can't summon your non-zombie extra deck monsters just the extra body on board could be what you need to turn the sucker into yuki ona or turn the yuki ona into another sucker so keep that in mind and the great thing about him is that he doesn't banish himself when he leaves the field like the shinobi does so you'll be able to use him again next turn a really cool play you can do with mad molar is to target your zombie dragon lord to make
you can level 8 to summon himself, and then you can use them both to go into Shirinui's Sun Saga, so you can return zombie synchros to your extra deck to non-target destroy a card. This is great for playing through opponent's boards, and it's great for follow-up plays, and if you get into a grind game, then you can use Mad Mauler again to make Sun Saga level 8 to summon himself, and use himself in Sun Saga to go into Zombie Dragon Lord again, so you have the Sun Saga to revive on the opponent's turn if you have more zombie synchros to return for the pop. Pretty much everything I've said about setting up your board, you can damn near forget a lot of that when it comes to breaking through the opponent's board. The way the zombies interact with each other is all shown within the combos I've showed you so far, so you're really going to keep all of those things in mind no matter what when you are playing this deck, but you will likely be using all of them differently when you are trying to get through interruptions. Your opponent isn't going to just sit there and let you set up a whole board, so you need to instead focus on setting up the best situation that you can given what the opponent is able to do to stop you. If your opponent interrupts your Unizombie by sending it to the grave from field somehow, then you could use Zombie Reborn to revive it and banish another from deck so you can go ahead and use it. Same thing with reviving it with Mizuki. If your opponent uses Effect Veiler on him, then you could use him as Link Material before reviving him with Mizuki or Reborn so you can use his other effect without being negated. Chungshi is a pretty hot target for Crackdown, they might want to steal it before you can use it to send anything, but if you can get another Zombie on field, then you can get Mad Molar and Grave somehow, then you can have Zombie Dragon Lord banish a zombie from your field to revive itself, then have Mad Molar revive itself and make Zombie Dragon Lord a level 8, so that you can go into Sun Saga and pop the opponent's crackdown, so not only do you get your Chang Shi back, you also get to activate her effect to send something else to the grave. And with Sun Saga and Chang Shi, you might be able to get more plays going. The opponent is probably going to want to banish things with DD Crow, but since you can get so many cards in your grave with a skill and with your starters, it's likely that you'll still be able to pull off the very bare minimum combo of Zombie Dragon Lord reviving Felgrand, as long as you summon Felgrand to the extra monster zone so that can be linked off with Gravity Controller. Sometimes, what you're dealing with isn't as much an issue of interrupting your plays, but of a monster that has some really good protection, and Yuki Ona can help with that with her on summon effects to negate something. Something else that's really helpful for follow up plays is that Zombie Reborn also has a grave effect to put a banished zombie back into the deck to set itself back to the field. You can't use its on field effect the same turn, but it's nice that you can put Yuki Ona back into the extra deck so you can use her on summon negate again, and it's nice that you can return a Mizuki to the deck to be sent to the grave again for more summons. Really, you should be looking at all of the special summons in this deck as just pieces of a puzzle that can be put together in a bunch of different ways. And in the combos I talked about earlier, you pretty much get to see all of the different ways the zombies interact with each other. This is definitely a deck that you need to be able to think on the fly for, as there are nearly endless possibilities to what you can accomplish with all of your special summons. If you feel like you are having trouble figuring it out, be sure to watch the combos in this video again, but if you are still having trouble, then join the Team 6K Community Discord, the link is in the description, tag me with your questions and I'll be able to help you out. After all, who should know more about the undead than undead himself? This is what undead looks like and there's not a damn thing I would change about it. In fact, I'm here to tell you how to build your deck and to show you how to play it, because there ain't anybody with a better undead deck than this. Let me stop trolling and actually go over the list here. Chongxi and Mizuki are by far the most important cards in the deck. We need to have a copy of Chongxi in the deck so we can banish it from the deck for Zombie Reborn, but we also really want to be able to open it so that we can put it in the grave with a skill. As if you have it, she can technically be a starter by herself alongside the skill. Mizuki is something we want as much as possible too, because every copy of Mizuki that we can get into the grave is more special summons we can pull off, and the more special summons we have available, the more we can play through interruptions, and the better boards we can make. Now you could play Burial from a Different Dimension, if you wanted. It's a card that lets you return exactly three banished monsters from your banish pile to your graveyard. With that, you could get your zombies, and especially your Mizuki, back into the grave to give you more special summons, and if the opponent uses DD Crow or IDP on you, then this gives you a great way to keep your plays going, getting those banished cards back so you can keep using it. If you are playing on ranked though, you aren't going to be able to guarantee that you'll be able to keep three banished monsters so that you can use this, unless your opponent has DD Crow or IDP. So basically, if your opponent doesn't have DD Crow or IDP, it isn't very good unless your hand is just that good that you can get that many banished zombies. But if your hand is that good anyway, then this card is just making a great thing better when you are already ahead, and if the opponent doesn't have DD Crow or IDP, then this card is often going to be a sitting duck in your hand. I only say that you shouldn't play this for ranked, because you can't be certain on ranked that the opponent is going to have IDP or DD Crow, but if you are playing in a tournament with sideboarding, then you will know if your opponent is able to play DD Crow or IDP, and it's likely that they will be siding those kinds of cards anyway if they aren't already in their main deck, so you'll almost always be able to benefit from all of the free bonus Mizukis that you'll get from Barrel from a different dimension. Samurai Skull is the best starter we can ask for in this deck, because its effect to send a 
Unizombie to the Grave is on summon, so it can't be stopped with something like Book of Moon the way Unizombie and Chang Shi can. And if the opponent has an interruption that removes it, then we get to summon a Unizombie from the deck to send yet another zombie. Because of how good it is, we really have to play three. But that doesn't mean that three's normal summon is enough. In order to have the highest chance of opening a normal summon to go alongside the Chang Shi play, we should also play three Unizombie. One simply does not cut it for consistency reasons. There's no statistical reason to run four normal summons in this deck, especially because opening both isn't a brick like I show in one of the combos in this video. You have to at least play two because of Zombie Reborn needing to banish another copy sometimes, and for consistency, maxing out on it is really optimal. Shinobi Necro and Mad Mauler are our tuners. We are going to need them if we want to get the plays done that I talked about in this video, but we only need one of each because a huge amount of the deck is able to send them to the grave when we need them, and unlike those ways of getting cards in the grave, these cards don't actually set anything up themselves. Because of Vampire Sucker and Shinobi Necro's draw effects, it's very likely that we are going to be able to draw into tech slots, and we have six tech slots available for techs in this deck, so you can really run whichever techs you feel are best for ranked at the time, best for the tournament you're about to play in, or really just the best techs that you have available in your collection. However, I will say that because of the fact that we are likely to be drawing on the opponent's turn with the Vampire Sucker, hand traps are something we can take a huge amount of advantage from, so I'm running six hand traps, three Effect Veiler, and three DD Crow. Effect Veiler is generically just really good to interrupt opponent's plays, but it's also really important because it's the only card we can use that can prevent number 68 Sanifon the Sky Prisons effect. It activates during the opponent's main phase to stop us from summoning from the grave on our turn. And because they can use it on their turn, we can't stop it with something like Chalice or Droplet, so Veiler is really the only option. If you're going against a deck that can summon Sanifon turn 1 in a tournament though, you might also like to put Ghost Mortner in your side deck so you can more reliably draw into a way to counter it. I think DD Crow is just the best hand trap of the format. It's good against pretty much every competitive deck, so it's always going to have some useful application. However, if you don't own DD Crows yet, you could also use Skullmeister, which can negate grave effects. It won't be as good against as many decks though, as not every deck that has a good target for Crow has a good negate for Skullmeister. When it comes to the extra deck, you just play one copy of Felgrand, Sun Saga, and Yuki Ona, because you can recycle them by a bunch of ways if you need them again. One copy of Gravity Controller, because you'll never need to use it more than once, and then you have to play at least two Vampire Sucker, so that you can use the first to summon Yuki Ona, and the second to link the Yuki Ona off, and from there you could choose to play a third Sucker for follow-up play if you can return Yuki Ona to the extra deck with Zombie Reborn, so you can link the Yuki Ona off again after summoning it again, so you can get the other Graveyard Summon of the Synchros. That would leave you with one slot left for Red Eye Zombie Dragon Lord himself, but there are some cases where you need to use Zombie Reborn to banish the Red Eye Zombie Dragon himself to summon the one from Grave. So for those niche situations, you could play a second copy of the Zombie Dragon Lord instead of a third copy of Vampire Sucker. It's going to be up to your personal preference. I've yapped long enough. Let's get into what you really came here to see. It's time to do. do, 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 do. Alright, so I am going second here. My hand is garbage because I have three staples in my hand, okay? You need to have at least two zombies to get your plays going because chang -Chi can't do it by herself, okay? None of the starters can do it by themselves either. They have to have something to, you know, revive, basically. If you want to get Mizuki by himself in the grave, all you have to revive is a zombie dragon lord. That's not very fun. If you have only the chang -Chi, then you could banish her and then only have the zombie dragon lord to banish. That's not very fun either. If you only have a starter, what are you sending the Mizuki to revive? exactly. But pretty much top decking any other zombie alongside another zombie is pretty much going to be helpful for us anyway. So he's going to normal summon his Dragon Spirit of White, use his effect uh, to get his successor soul, send blue eyes, set three back row. And of course I do top deck into a zombie. Of course it is the one of Shinobi Necro, but it would have technically been better for us if it was any starter, because the starters could have sent Mizukis to the grave for us to revive our chang -Chi before using our zombie reborn. But yeah, we're gonna send both of those, get that zombie reborn, banish one from deck to revive the chang -Chi. He's going to use his successor soul to get rid of my chang -Chi in response to, you know, this whole play here. But I'm still gonna be able to get the chang -Chi on the field from the banish and the Necro to come back as well. Okay, he's using an ultimate fusion as well because he doesn't, he really does not want me to activate chang -Chi. so I'm going to use DD Crow, banishing the Blue Eyes from Grape. If he has a Blue Eyes in hand, he still gets the Fusion Summon, and he still gets the Pup, and that would be too bad for me. That's a bit unlikely. The DD Crow most of the time is going to be able to prevent this Fusion Summon, but yeah, the chang is going to send a Mizuki. Mizuki is going to revive the chang -Chi simply because I do want to have something to banish for the Red-Eyed Zombie Dragon, but it's going to trigger the Shinobi Necro before I Synchro Summon to top deck and to discard one. And hey, look, another Mizuki. Must be nice to be me, bro. I'm just that good. Anyway, I'm going to summon Felgrand to the extra monster 
monster zone because I don't know, you know, what other interruptions he has. It's always best to summon Felgrant to the extra monster zone just in case. But yeah, he's going to banish his blue eyes. I'm going to link these two off into Vampire Sucker. And the bazooki is going to bring back the red eyes zombie dragon. Top deck into a starter. I was fully prepared to end my turn right there, but I top decked into a starter. Must be nice to be me. I'm going to use that to send a mizuki. Link these two off into Yuki Ona. And the mizuki is going to bring back any zombie. It doesn't matter which one to link off into the next copy of Vampire Sucker. So now I have the full end board. I've drawn a couple of cards. So I got my Veilers and I could top deck into another starter or follow up next turn on the opponent's turn. I also have the interruption of Red Eye Zombie Dragon Lord reviving the Felgrand or the Yuki Ona reviving the Felgrand just in case or the Yuki Ona reviving Zombie Dragon Lord to revive Felgrand just in case. This board is just not only really good when it comes to interruption and top decking cards but just also really resilient to the opponent's board breakers and that's why this is kind of the best version of the deck. But yeah I'm gonna attack in, attack in again and just for the flex I'm gonna revive the Felgrand as well. Easy money, easy life. Okay so I'm going first here. I'm gonna use the skill to discard my Yuna Zombie and my Mizuki. It's great because it just means that I can special summon my Yuna Zombie to use Yuna Zombie. It's really amazing. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to revive that Yuna Zombie. He's going to Veiler it because he thinks it's an unsummon effect, but it is a teaching moment here. If he didn't Veiler me here, what I would have done is I would use the first effect of Yuna Zombie to discard a card to increase its own level by one. And that would mean the opponent has to Veiler it because what are they just going to not Veiler it? You know what I mean? That I could be discarding a Mizuki. They don't know. It would also just be kind of a waste to negate one of my effects, but not both of my effects. So just, you know, Veiler the first thing that happens. So that's how you play through Veiler with Unizombie. But yeah, it, I didn't have to worry about it. Now I can just normal summon my Samurai Skull, send another Mizuki, link these two off so that the Mizuki can revive Unizombie so we can use his effect now through Veiler. Uh, drawing a card as well, drawing into a Veiler of my own, very nice. Unizombie is going to send a uh, chang -Chi. Now I can use Zombie Reborn. Even though I have, you know, monsters in my main monster zone, I feel fine doing this because I don't actually have anything worth banishing right now. So I don't have to use the banish effect of chang -Chi. So I'm going to banish one from deck to revive chang -Chi and not activate the chang -Chi that was banished because I don't have the shinobi engraved. But the chang -Chi can send the shinobi to the grave. I can link these two off into Yukiona and then I can use the zombie dragon lord to banish my chang -Chi from the field here. And that will trigger my chang -Chi because it is banished to banish the shinobi summon itself. The shinobi will also summon itself and I go into skeletal dragon felgrand. It's going to banish his Veiler from grave and I'm going to go into Vampire Sucker. I have the full combo through Veiler. Very nice. Of course, he used his Veiler wrong, but if he used it correctly, it would have been exactly the same situation. But yeah, he's going to use his offerings to the Doom tier, meaning he doesn't get a top deck next turn. But he's destroying my zombie. Oh my goodness. What am I going to do? I'm going to let it happen. I don't care. You want? You know why I don't care? It's because I have the Yuki Ona to revive it whenever I need or to revive the Felgrain whenever I need. It doesn't matter. That's how resilient this combo is. But anyway, he is going to use Kiss a Kill and what I could do is use my Yuki Ona to revive Zombie Dragon Lord, Zombie Dragon Lord revive Felgrand, to prevent him from going into Link plays. But I have the Veiler anyway, so I might as well do that. Yeah, so I'm just going to Veiler his Kiss a Kill here. He's going to set a couple of back row and on his end phase, since he didn't have any other plays, I'm going to use Yuki Ona to revive the Zombie Dragon Lord. Draw a bonus card, must be nice. Zombie Dragon Lord's also going to revive Felgrand to banish his Kiss a Kill. Hell yeah. I draw another Veiler. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm grinding out here. I'm drawing my whole deck. But yeah, my turn. I'm going to use the Zombie Reborn to put the Yuki Ona back into my extra deck here um, so I can link these two off into the Yuki Ona. We can play one because we can just put it back into the extra deck anyway, but he does warning point it, unfortunate. So I normal summon the Samurai Skull and he warning points that too. So I can't have lethal this turn. That's okay though. I'll just attack in and because of offerings to the Doomed, he doesn't get a top deck. So he gets nothing. On his end phase, I bring back Felgrand. Just, you know, on my turn, easy money, easy life. GG's. Finally. A true and pure zombie deck playable in Duel Links after all this time. I love Vampires, Vendred, Shiranui, and my Akashi, but pure zombies is my deck, bro. It's the one that makes me love them all. And if you love them too, let me know if you're trying to join the army of the undead. I'm trying to see how many zombie fans are watching this video. You might have noticed too that Shiranui, my Akashi, and Vampires are all represented in this deck, as if all of the zombies are coming together for a common cause. Maybe all of the undead army could also come together to defeat the mighty 
Weatherman. If you guys have any other questions about the deck or in general, then definitely join the Discord like I said earlier, or leave your questions in the comments and I'll be sure to help you out. But other than that guys, if you like the video, then slap like now, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell to get notified every time we make a new video. Have yourselves a good one guys, and I've been Undead from Team 6K, signing out. Hey, why they gotta hate on me? I done got me a quarter million views and they still saying they low key. They ain't wanna come work with the kid, but I'm flexing with Zay on beats. How they ask for a spot at the gym, but they leave all the weight on me. I don't ask them to wait on me. They would ask where they gon' be With a song if they wanted the weatherman I ain't asking to pay no fees She was homeless and needed a spot I ain't ask her to pay no lease I ain't ask her to say no please I ain't ask her to make no cheese Scream fake but it ain't on me Got clean so it ain't no streets Why green if it ain't no keeps Brought cream so it ain't no beef My team say it ain't no chief My demon they hang on me They seemingly ain't no peace I seen him he ain't no beast For real